with Etiqueta Excellence is a center for teaching etiquette, manners, and social skills to children, young people like you guys, and adults. And I'm going to start with a quote. Good manners will open doors that the best education cannot. Social skills are the great equalizer. Good social skills transcend social class, economic status, achievement, and race. So here is the one opportunity that we have to forget about our background, to forget where we came from, where, uh, what our parents have done or not done, and we have the opportunity to decide that from this moment forward, I will have the skills that will open doors to personal and professional success. And this is what we're going to talk about for the next 20 minutes, okay? Any questions so far? why we're here. We're here for a quick etiquette fix for smart teens. Why smart? You're smart because you decided to become leaders. You're smart because you're members of Aspira clubs. That shows that you're smart. That shows that you want your life to progress to bigger and better things. That's the reason why we're all here. That's the reason why I'm here, because I want to share what little knowledge I may have on this topic, but with the great knowledge that I have and the great certainty that I have that these social skills, these soft skills, will change your life. They will guarantee that you can achieve all that you want to achieve, that I'm sure is a lot, okay? So let's talk a little bit about what is etiquette. Could you do the next one, please? Okay, what is etiquette? Well, this fancy-looking gentleman here, he is King Louis XIV of France. He reigned from 1643 to 1715. He was the king of France for 72 long years. And he loved etiquette. He loved having a routine for everything. He, from the moment he woke up until the time he went to bed, every activity that he did had a way of doing it correctly, according to his terms. Now, etiquette, if you show me the next one, please. This is where King Louis lived. This is the Palace of Versailles. It's in the outskirts of Paris. And one of your goals should be to one day visit it. It is a magnificent place. It took 35,000 people to build it and 30 years of hard work. But this is the result. So etiquette comes from a French word that means sign or poster. And what happened was that King Louis loved his gardens so much. These gardens are like this from the 1600s to the present day. He didn't want anybody to step on his flowers or to ruin his castle in any way. So he had his gardeners and his staff put little etiquettes, which means little signs, all over the castle, telling people what to do and what not to do. For those of you that speak Spanish, you know that the word etiqueta in Spanish means etiquette, manners, but it also means sign to this day. Etiqueta in Spanish is a label or a sign, and it is so in French also. So with etiquette signs all over his gardens, that's how it evolved to mean the correct way of doing something. That's what etiquette is all about. 
the proper way of doing something. Okay? So now that we know the origins of etiquette, we're going to start. This is uh, this slide presentation is from a two-hour seminar that I give teenagers. We are going to try and compress all of this information in 20, 30 minutes. So as you can see, we're going to be going very quickly over things. But the idea today is for you to have the knowledge that those skills that you need to acquire, of course you will have to acquire them at another seminar, by reading, there's tremendous bibliography that you can check out at the libraries talking about table manners, introductions, how to network, how to introduce yourself to people. I just want you to take with you today the fact that you need to learn those skills, okay? We're going to start talking about introductions and presentations. This simply means that you have to learn to give a good handshake. And a good handshake has some characteristics. The first thing you have to do is look at a person's eyes. When you are shaking someone's hand, you are not staring to the ceiling or to the floor or looking around the rest of the room. Welcome, Lieutenant Lopez. You are aware of the fact that you have to be in the now. You have to be aware of the person that you're shaking hands with. Okay? That's the most important tip. There is something that we call the mitten hand. You put your fingers, your four fingers together, your thumb up, and you shake someone's hand vigorously not so strong, especially the boys, that you hurt someone that you're shaking hands with, especially if it's a lady who's wearing rings. You don't want to injure the poor woman, but you give a strong handshake. Two or three pumps up and down is sufficient, and then you let go. But what is most important about doing that is that you're looking at the person in the face. It is a sign of respect, it is a sign that you are paying attention at that particular moment to the person that you are introducing yourself to. Also, you have to learn to introduce yourself by saying your full name. Would you be so kind as to serve as my partner? Please stand up. Thank you. Elizabeth. Okay. Supposing that I walk into a room and I don't know Lisbeth and she's standing there, I have to be self-confident enough to be able to introduce myself, shake her hand, state my name, and expect her to do the same in return. So let's see how we do this. Hello, Lisbeth. My name is Yvonne Salas, and I'm going to be speaking at the Aspira Youth Summit. Now tell me your name, Lisbeth. My name is Lisbeth Rodriguez. And I'm an aspirant. I'm an aspirant. Thank you so much. You see, this is what you do. You look at someone in the face. The idea behind this is that you become confident enough so that you're not nervous and that you can handle any situation that you are, uh, that you find yourself in. That's the idea. Okay, the next one please. You see, the art of introductions will take you from not being acknowledged, from people not remembering who you are, your name or what you do, to making meaningful relations. It is proven that people do business or uh, accept job applications from or uh, get raises from people that are impacting to them. And one of the ways that you can make yourself unforgettable is by a good handshake, stating your name firmly, and looking at the person in the eye. 
Welcome, Ms. Ruth Pacheco, our chair from the LNC Broward Theater Group. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Ruth. Okay, we're going to talk quickly about personal appearance. Now, after you introduce yourself, it has been proven, all scientific studies, the best universities in the country, that first impressions are made within the first 15 to 30 seconds that you meet someone. 15 to 30 seconds. That means if you blow it, you blow it. You only have one chance to make a good first impression. And that happens immediately when somebody meets you. Therefore, it is your opportunity, your choice, your decision to be adequately, appropriately dressed for the occasion. So what does this mean? It means, of course, there are no rules. Etiquette changes through time and culture. You remember when we first started the slide that Louis XIV, his outfit, no one is going to wear that to go out in the street nowadays. But still, although there are no rules, there are some rules. The rule is do not wear a ball gown to a ball game. If you're invite, invited to a Marlins game, would you go wearing that gown, girls? <laughs> of course not. Young men, if you're invited to a formal wedding, would you go wearing the shorts and the flip-flops? Okay, if you decide to do that, we go back to what I just said. Social graces are the great equalizer, but it's your choice. Your choice. That's what's wonderful about it, that if you learn and you put it into practice, you will know what to wear and what to do in any social situation that you're confronted with. So, what we have to learn is to be able to choose the appropriate dressing. I could talk for hours, Lucy, so you tell me when I have to start cutting it short, okay? The next one. Okay. 55% of first impression is made exclusively on how you look. Scientifically proven. And this all happens in the first 15 to 30 seconds that you see someone. Presenting yourself in the most appropriate manner is always your choice. We are talking here about leadership. We are talking about determining what you want to do with your life. If you are a leader, you will choose to do the correct way. To do it the correct way because you want to be perceived as efficient, professional, leader in your community, and with higher aspirations. There's a wonderful quote that I read someplace that uh, I use in a seminar uh, uh, specifically, Dress for Success, that says you should always dress for where you want to be in five years, not for where you are today. Wear what you want to see yourself as in the future. Dress now for the college you want to attend. Dress now for the type of job you want to have in the future. Not for what your life is now, but what your life will be, because you are convinced that your life will be the way you want it to be, because you are doing everything in your power to achieve what you want to achieve. It's nobody else's responsibility, it's nobody else's fault, it's not because my family did this or that, or didn't do this or that, it's not because of my background, it's not because my parents don't speak English, it's not because my parents didn't go to school, that's in the past. It's the present and the future that we have to talk about, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, the next one please. You're here. This is your life now. This is our immediate goal. Everybody's going to graduate. There's nothing, no questions about that. We have to graduate from high school. 
we have to go to college or go into the workforce. And this is where we want to see ourselves. And that takes work. Nothing is easy, but everything can be learned and can be done if you put your mind to it. Okay, this is what we mentioned before. 15 to 30 seconds. That's the chance you get to make a good first impression. Good or bad. Okay, some quick tips if you want to make that great first impression. For the girls, too much cologne is something you don't want to wear. It's to have a nice aura of perfume, not to make somebody faint if they go inside with you in an elevator. Too much or too large jewelry. Jewelry is a compliment. It complements your outfit, it complements your look. It's not to detract from you. You don't want everybody to just be looking at your earrings. You want people to be looking at your face and at you. You are what's important, not the jewelry. Clothes that are too tight or too revealing. Here we're talking about being a leader and being perceived as a leader and being perceived as a professional. If you're going to the beach, you can wear something very revealing. If you're going to a nightclub, you can wear something that's too tight. If you're going to class, if you're going for a job interview, if you're going for a college interview, you don't do any of the tight, any of the see-throughs, any of the two, 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 two short skirts. Okay, the next one, please. Now for everybody, keep hair and nails well groomed. Personal hygiene is of the utmost importance. Of the utmost importance. I cannot emphasize it enough. Usually we see that girls do a good job at keeping their hair and nails well groomed. That unfortunately is not true of boys. Boys have a tendency to let those aspects go a little. But from now on, we're going to make sure that we keep our hair and nails well groomed. Now the next one is extremely important. Keep your shoes clean and polished. You cannot imagine what an impact that has when someone is interviewing you, either for college admission or for a job. There is not an HR person who is not going to look at your shoes. They are all going to look at your shoes and they're going to see how clean they are and how well kept. It doesn't mean you have to have a collection. You can have one pair of shoes, but you clean them before you put them on every morning. Okay, use professional looking portfolio briefcases and bags. If you have just one, make sure that it looks professional. Okay, here we are talking that our aim is for you to graduate college and get the job you want. And for this, you have to get the mindset already. Okay, the next one, please. All right, we are starting to work the area of table manners. After we conclude uh, this presentation, you are all going to go have lunch. Now we are going from one extreme to the other. This is a really, really formal place setting. But take a look at it. You will be invited to a dinner sooner than you think where you will have to navigate this table setting and figure out what goes where and why. Is everybody looking at this image? Yes. Okay. Does anybody know what that little plate on the upper left hand is for? Okay. Go ahead. No. Butter? Some what? Somebody? Cream cheese. 
it's for your bread and butter. But that is called your bread plate. You cannot imagine how frequently at this day and age I have sat down at a dinner table at a gala at an event and my neighbor has eaten my bread. <laughs> because people think that if it's to your right hand side, it should be the right bread. But what's on the right side of that person is my bread. Because the bread plate goes on the left. So from now on, you know that when you see a little bread plate, it's on the upper left hand corner of your setting, and that is your bread. Another thing that I want you to remember is that when you get that bread bun in that plate, you're not going to butter the whole bread. You're going to break off a small piece, you're going to butter that small piece, and that's the piece you're going to put in your mouth. And when you want another piece of butter bread, you're going to break up another little piece, and you're going to butter that little piece, and you're going to eat it like that. You do not butter the whole bun. You don't put it to your mouth in one big piece. You cut it off, and then put it in your mouth. Will you remember that for me, please? Thank you. And then I'm going to show you a little trick in case you forget. Okay, everybody, put your fingers like this. Okay? Now put them in your lap. Okay? When you go to a fancy dinner like this, and you say, hey, what is that little wall? That etiquette lady, what did she say? Where is my bread plate? Okay, you go like this, and then you bring it up, and you see you have a B on your left, B for bread, uh, and you have a D on your right, D for drink. So my wine glass is on the right hand side, and my bread plate is on the left hand side. <laughs> When you finish eating, 
you're going to put those utensils on that plate and the waiter is going to remove it. When they bring in the second service, you're going to use the next fork and the next knife in the same order. So now, from now on, you're not worried. Even if you have five forks and five knives, you know that they're there because they're going to be used on the continuous way, no matter what dish you're serving, from the outside in. Always, always, always. So one less thing to worry about. If it's there, you take the one that's the, to the extreme outside and continue those using the next one in. Okay? Another thing that I want to mention before uh, we talk specifically about today's lunch is that you see there's a napkin, number A. If you have a cloth napkin or a paper napkin, the first thing you do when you get to the table is put it in your lap. I see some people that know this because they're saying it. Okay, but put it into practice. Because the only way that you are going to make sure that you do it correctly when it's time to do it in, before an important person to you is by making it a habit. So from now on, when you see a cloth napkin on the table, or if it's an informal uh, lunch or dinner and it's a paper napkin, open it up and put it in your lap. And it stays in your lap until you finish eating. And then you put it back on the left-hand side where it was originally. There's a question here. That's a very good question, thank you. You eat it during. The only thing that's uh, required is what I mentioned before. Whether it's toast or a bun or any type of bread, you don't eat the whole piece. Just don't take it to your mouth as a whole. Cut off the piece and eat that piece that you take to your mouth and the rest remains on the plate. Yes, another question. Okay, if it's in a private home, you put it on the chair. If it is in a restaurant, for hygienic reasons, it has evolved so that it's perfectly correct to put it on the table, lightly folded. You don't have to fold it perfectly the way it was when you first found it. Sometimes you go to a restaurant and the napkin has the shape of a swan or a, an umbrella or some fancy little thing. Of course you're not expected to put it back into that shape. You just loosely put it, but you always put it to the left of your plate. Okay? And immediately when you come back to the table, you put it on your lap once again. While you're sitting down, that napkin must always be on your lap. Go ahead, there was a question here. Do you always have to use the right hand? What is your left hand? Okay, if you're left handed, you hold it with your left hand. Uh, there are two styles of eating, uh, which is going a little bit deeper into this, but it's what is called continental style and American style. American style of eating, you cut your meat with your fork in your left hand. You have the fork on the left hand and you cut with the knife with the right hand. Then you put your knife down and you switch hands. You put your fork that was on your left hand, you take it with your right hand and then you eat. That's the American style of eating. Continental or European style, you cut with the fork in your left hand and you don't switch. You eat with your fork on your left hand. You put the piece that you cut directly to your mouth. That's the continental style of eating. No switching utensils. American style of eating, perfectly all right. It's our culture, it's different, but you are allowed to switch hands with, uh, you know, with the fork, okay? Any other questions? All right, now let's talk a little bit
before uh, we go have lunch about an informal lunch like today. Today, you're having what we call a boxed lunch. Go ahead, there's a question there. Sorry, I can't hear you. Louder, louder. Do you have to drink your pinky up? With your pinky up? Very good question. No, you do not. You do not. That, a hundred years ago, especially in Europe, in the Victorian era, it was considered refined for a woman to drink with her pinky up. That is no longer Listen, etiquette, like languages, evolve with cultures and times. And so etiquette that was appropriate and correct 100, 200 years ago is no longer required. So now you do not have to drink uh, with your pinky up. There are rules for drinking, that, but that is not one of them. I will tell you this. Uh, you see there is wine glasses. The white wine glass is the F, the one in the middle, okay? It's a wine glass that is smaller than the red wine. It is smaller because white wine you drink cold. And so you have a smaller amount, so by the time you finish it, the temperature hasn't changed. You don't drink white wine holding the body of the wine glass. You are supposed to drink white wine by holding the stem of the wine glass. Why do you think that is so? Go ahead. Does anybody know? Go ahead. The temperature will change. You have body heat. Your hands are warm. So if you hold the wine glass, with your hand where the liquid is, you are changing the temperature. So, you drink, you hold it with the stem, by the stem, so that you don't alter the temperature of the wine. So that's one of the many rules, but it's a general one good to know. Okay? No, they don't need to know that yet, but they can begin to see who's doing it wrong. You see, I have this image when I teach uh, adult table manners. I have a picture of two presidents toasting, and one of them is holding the wine glass in the wrong place, and he's the president of a country. So I usually put that up on the screen so people see that not everybody knows everything that they should know. In the case of a president, I don't blame him. I blame the head of protocol of that uh, of the uh, presidential palace who hasn't taught the president or the first lady how to do it correctly. They have the people to teach them, so it's not uh, they're not doing their job. But going back to our lunch, we are having a boxed lunch. We are having what is called, in table manners, finger food. That means that it's food that we touch with our hands. The only food that you touch with your hands is food that qualifies as finger food. And this is what we're having today. We're having sandwiches, we're having chips, and we're having cookies. So, well, now that I told you the menu, what I'm going to tell you is how to eat it correctly. And I'm going to be watching. <laughs> so I'm going to be having fun after this. Okay. First things first. Today, with your menu, you do not have plates and you do not have utensils. What you do have are napkins. And the first thing you do when you have finger foods is that you need two paper napkins. One to put in your lap and one to hold the finger food that you're eating in the part that you are not biting into. 
In other words, finger food, as any type of food, needs a stepping stone or a landing place. What I mean by this, no food goes directly from the table, from the tray, from the box, to your mouth. It needs some place to land before it gets to your mouth. It either lands on a plate, for instance, if we're having appetizers, and it's a buffet table, there's little plates there. You don't take the food and put it directly in your mouth. You take the food, you put it either on a napkin or on a plate. And then, from that napkin or that plate, you take it to your mouth. Another thing we don't do at a buffet, which we're not having today, but it's good for you to know. Have you heard of the famous double dipping? Yeah. It's disgusting, but everybody does it. I don't want you ever to stand by a buffet table or by an appetizer tray, take the carrot, crunch, ranch, crunch, ranch, crunch, ranch, because once you bite into it, your germs, your saliva is on that piece that's left, and you're going to put it back in the ranch dressing, and so is everybody else. Do we want to eat like that? No. Do you want somebody else's germs in your mouth? No. So you're going to take the carrot and put it on your plate. And you're going to take some sauce and put it on your plate. Alright, we're going to have two more minutes and then you're off to lunch. So listen to me for the next two minutes. Okay. Napkin on your lap napkin to wrap around your sandwich. Here, you're going to have also chips. You open the bag, and the ideal situation, okay, I'm talking ideal. I don't know if it's comfortable enough for you to do this while sitting here, but if you were sitting at a table, you use the box as a substitute for your plate. So you're going to open your bag of chips, and you're going to pour the amount you think you're going to be eating in the bottom of that little box. And that little box becomes your plate. Then you're going to wrap a napkin around the part of the sandwich that you're eating and bite from it. The idea is that you, your hands are not touching directly the bread. And last but not least, when you finish that sandwich and those chips, I don't want napkins that are all crunched up and disgusting. Come on, girls, especially. Never again place a crunched up napkin on a table. It shows that you don't value yourself enough to make it pretty. All our lives are projected by every little action that we take. Gentlemen, you are not Neanderthals, you are leader, leaders. My accent just came out. And I want you to fold those napkins and put it in a decent form. Girls, if the napkin gets lipstick on it, always fold it so that the lipstick marks are not showing when you put it back on the table. Okay? Any questions so far? Well, Go ahead. Okay, this is a good question. Especially paper napkins. You can use five if you need to. The only rules is that you don't crunch them up, that when you put them back on the table or on your lunch box, the dirt is not showing. Always fold it so that the dirt is not visible. And it is better to use more napkins than to have dressing dripping down the side of your mouth. So it is correct to use as many napkins as you need. Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, do, you, do you eat your wife like a 
And finally, choose the appropriate attire for the events you attend. Remember that image, never wear a ball gown to a ball game, never wear shorts and flip flops to a formal wedding. Thank you very much, go and tell your name. Thank you, Yvonne Salas of Portales Magazine.